that boy probably 50 percent of the time didn't know his father mm. so when he meets another man or another father figure or another mentor he's coming into the relationship like you gonna leave me too mm. like like if i get close to you right like, can I trust you all the way to the end? Because we got abandonment issues. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to protect myself from being abandoned. Yeah. So it would appear that the love isn't lazy. It would appear that I'm being protective. Yeah. But lazy love says, listen, I am going to sit in the seat of my trauma and not do the work to climb out of it. I'm just going to blame you. Mm. I'm just going to blame you. I'm going to blame everybody. I'm going to blame them. And that's safe for me because blame gives me cover. Yeah. Blame gives me the ability to not grow and still show up at the table the same way I was last time. And if I keep blaming you, we'll keep looking at the person or the people who you're blaming. The truth is, if you're going to live right, if you're going to get rid of the lazy love, if you're going to climb over it, you got to start with you. Yeah. And, and and that sounds so easy, don't it? Like it's yeah. like easier said than done. Right. But it's the truth no matter how hard it is. No, that's okay? true. And if I'm gonna love you, if I'm gonna love you, if you're gonna be my brother, and I figure out how I'm gonna deal with you at my brother, I gotta know a couple of things. I gotta know number one, this is the son of a prominent man of God. This is the son of a man who he grew up in church his whole life. Right. This is a man who been preaching since he knew how to speak. I got to factor all of that in before I talk to you about anything. That's the work that I have to do to be able to love you properly. Once I find out where you came from, then I can decide if we're supposed to go to the next place together. Yeah. I think uh, when I was growing up, <clears throat> I'm an 80s baby, is we reduced low self-esteem to teenagers mm. and really didn't see it in adults. And uh, one of the obstacles I've witnessed as a pastor is how many people don't feel like they're deservant of love. And so because they're not deservant of love, they'll settle for sex. Mm. At what point in your own life did you get to the place where you drew a, a, a mark in the sand to say, I deserve all of the love in the world because I give so much? Ah oh, man, I think I sometimes day to day may still struggle to get there. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say that I'm fully there because we live in such a a hypercritical world that, and I know you understand this, yeah. that no matter how boisterous or strong I project, there are moments where I can atrophy and wonder, do I deserve it? Mm -hmm. That's just being a hundred, keeping yeah. it a buck and keeping it real. Do I deserve? the respect of, of people. Do I deserve to be loved? Um, and that comes from a father wound that I think that we will talk about. But then on the other hand, I do know that I've given so much that I deserve it because whatever man sows, that shall he also reap. Yes. Like yes. if I'm giving it out, right. why should I be avoidant, which is another attachment style, yeah. when I'm receiving it? Well, this is what makes the book so palatable is because here you are talking to a person who studies the word of God, understands love languages, understands love styles, attachment styles, and still yet has the issue. Yeah. Right. And so now I'll battle with it. But then sometimes, you know, oxymoron, I'll be ready for the challenge and I deserve it. And where is that? And then when it comes, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm in there. I'm, I'm in there just like everybody else. Um and and still trying to figure it out. I, I I guess that's the best way I can answer it. No, that's that's solid. Uh, the people in my pastorate, I've had the greatest amount of um, work to do. Were males who were absent of a father, drum roll, but had never. This is a consistent theme. Never been on a team. Mm. They've never been on a team. To put the single puzzle aside, we know that narrative. But if they've never been on a team, they don't know how to work well with others. They'll never move forward for the group to win. They want to be the MVP without passing the ball. Wow. Uh, as an athlete, what is it that you have to look for, not just in finding a mate, but a teammate? Man, that's, boy, you, <laughs> first of all, am I here? You are here. 
Am I at new birth or is this a podcast? No, this Rev, a podcast. You... This no, a that's, podcast. that's a crazy question, man. I always say there was more to life than basketball, but through basketball, I learned a lot about life. Mm -hmm. And what I learned about teamwork is you're still my teammate if you make a mistake. Yeah. What I learned about teamwork is that if you make the mistake, it's my job to cover your mistake for the good of the team. Yeah. What I learned about teamwork is you're probably going to do the same thing for me. Yeah. So it's the same thing in relationships. Same thing that I've learned in relationships that I've got to look for somebody who's playing the same game I'm playing. That's, That's the first thing. Yes. Because if I'm with somebody who playing golf and I'm playing <laughs> basketball, <laughs> right. I can't be mad at them because there ain't no teamwork in that sport. Right. So we right. got to make sure we playing the same sport. No. What does love mean to you? Yeah. How do you define it? And what does conflict mean? And how do we solve it? Yeah. You know, I think that finding out what game you're playing before you jump on the court or the field, whatever it is, is is like it's like paramount. It's the most important thing. Yeah. And and what do we say to each other when we don't agree? Like how far can we go? Yeah. You know, what names are off the table? What what sentences can't be used? <laughs> Me yeah. and my wife on Wednesdays we do this thing called 10 minutes. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> oh, I hate it. What is it? So it's like we both get 10 minutes to talk to each other about anything we want. No person can interrupt for the entire 10 minutes. And you have to ask permission to respond to what the person said. And the person who asks for the 10 minutes owns the stage. Yeah, so the I'm other like... day she came to me, she said, <laughs> can I have 10 minutes? I said, dang, <laughs> <laughs> what I done did now. Right. And it was all good. Wow. The anxiety yeah. of being on a team with a person somewhere in my life that wasn't playing the same game still lives today. Because mm -hmm. every man knows when you hear, uh, maybe I got to. Listen. And it ain't Tevin Campbell. Not that can we talk. Yeah, yeah, like not the at other all. One. Yeah, so, so making sure we're playing the right game, making sure that we're playing by the same rules, mm -hmm. and making sure that we both have equitable outcomes. Because I can't pay a different price of admission than listen. you. For the same infraction. No, absolutely. James Woodson, a uh, preacher out of Greensboro, North Carolina, said that the body of Christ is the only army that leaves its wounded soldiers. And when you talk about being on the same team, you have witnessed it, I've witnessed it. And David said, it's the silence of my friends. How, how does it impact you? to go through moments where you, you, we all in it together, but you ain't hearing from nobody else. Y'all see them out here, person? Y'all, nobody got nothing to say? <laughs> where's, yeah. where's the defensive end? Yeah. And, well, and, it, and it frustrates me because, and you can attest to this. Yeah. I ain't never silent when none of my friends go hey, through nothing. Hey, listen. I ain't never silent. And, and if I don't get online and say nothing, because I think that's cap, I think that's fake, I call you. You do. If you going through something, hey, bro, you need me, I'm a I got witness. you, Yeah. what you need me to do. Yeah. Because my friendships didn't start online, so I ain't got to maintain them online. <laughs> right. So I maintain them where they were started. Right. But man, I have been through some stuff. And I'll be honest with you. I'll be like, I can think of the people I didn't hear from. Yeah. And to get to me, I'll be like, okay, but I, I'm trying my best to give them the benefit of it. Maybe they ain't heard about it. Oh, they heard about it. Maybe they ain't heard about it. Maybe, maybe, maybe they on vacation. Like, maybe they ain't heard it's about it. It's the World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> not not, not the United Hawaii, States they Web. They could be in Mexico. They done heard it. But you know, I'm yeah. just, I'm trying to figure out a way to keep me. This is crazy. It's going to sound crazy. Sometimes I'm trying to figure out how not to disturb a relationship that I don't even really have. Mm. Like, I, I know that's, that's a me thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm literally trying to figure out how not to blow up a relationship that if I really, really dig deep and think about it, right. I don't even really have it. Mm -hmm. It's just a me thing. I got to figure that part out because I live that out periodically from time to time. It, it is the oxygen that we breathe. George Bonner gives the data that smaller churches raise more money than bigger churches. Watch John, because those who are in smaller churches feel like the need is greater. Mm. 
roofs. If I'm sitting in the church with 200 people to pass and say, hey, we need a roof, everybody wow. feel like this roof ain't going to get done unless, unless I help. I, yes. In a bigger church, they're like, oh, they got it. It's going to happen. Ain't nothing to worry about. 